Hi everyone, my name is James. This is a pirate's chest I made for one of my daughters for Christmas. I thought I'd show you how I built it. The first step in all of my woodworking projects usually begins with me jointing straight edges on all of my lumber. I'm starting with the lid of the pirate's chest. I drew up some curves and found one that I liked and then calculated the angles between the slats for the top pieces. I set the bevel and width on my table saw and began cutting those out. I'm laying out the lid pieces and aligning the grain in a way that I think looks pleasing. When that's done, I flip them all over, align them straight, and prepare to tape the backs together tightly. It always helps to have a few extra hands in the shop for things like this. Luckily, one of my daughters or my wife is usually there to help. I'm going to thoroughly glue all of the joints together and then brush it out smoothly so that every surface is coated. Here again, more hands helps. The tape on the back side is holding it pretty securely, so I'm bringing the front together and kind of squeezing it to get the glue to spread nicely. Since I always put too much glue, it's a good idea to try to start wiping off the excess as soon as you can. I'm sort of putting the lid upside down in some clamps, but I'm going to have to clamp it loosely. If it's too tight, it's not really going to fit on the box later. When I think I have the clamp distances spaced properly, I'll go ahead and add some weight to the top to kind of help tighten up those glue joints. I do know the exact dimensions of the box, so I just want to double check the measurements on the size of the lid to make sure that matches up. Once the top's all dried, I can take it off and set it over one of the side pieces. This way I can actually trace the exact shape of the lid and cut the side out to fit. Over on the bandsaw, I'll try to cut that trace out perfectly. Once I've test fit the first side, I can use that as a template to make the second. With some double sided tape, I've stuck the two sides together. And over on my router table, I can use my pattern cutting bit in order to cut the second one out to exactly match the first one. Notice that I'm cutting backwards to prevent tear out. If you do this, keep a firm grip on your pieces. Now I'm going back to the miter saw to cut out both the front and the back of the box. Then it's time for a little bit of glue up and assembly. If you've seen any of my videos, you know I'm a big fan of putting glue on both sides of every surface. I am aware that this is more glue than what is needed and there will be more squeeze out and more cleanup. However, I feel more confident in this in that I know that I'm not going to miss any areas. The way I'm putting this box together, it's basically all butt joints that are glued together. That's actually a pretty weak joint, but we're going to fix that later. Now comes the complex task of trying to clamp all of this together. Just take your time and clamp where you can. Make sure your joints are tight. Here's some photos of it after I had it all clamped up. All the joints were actually quite tight. I squeezed a good amount of glue out of each one and I couldn't really see any gaps. So I was satisfied with that.
Because of the geometry of the lid, it sticks out a little bit past the front and back of the box. This is easily handled with a belt sander. It's also a good time to begin sanding the outside of the box. After it was all assembled and dried, we did notice a few very minor gaps along the top, so my daughter helped me out and filled them with a golden oak putty. Then I spent a little bit of time making sure I had the ends sanded perfectly flush, starting with the belt sander and working my way down to the random orbit sander and ultimately down to about 220 grit. At this point, it's finally time to cut the lid off of the pirate's chest. There are many ways to do this, and it's easy to cut it off with the table saw. I prefer the bandsaw, since I have one and I can do it in just one pass. Here at my router table, I'm using a dado bit to put a rabbit all the way around the inside. That allows me to set the bottom inside the box so that it's flush. I did about three passes going deeper each time until I got down to a depth of about three quarters of an inch. It's important to accurately measure the length and width of the bottom. Then I cut the bottom to fit on the table saw Again, trying to be as accurate as I can. Since the rabbiting bit left the corners round in the body of the box, I've set the bottom underneath there and I'm trying to trace the exact contours of that curve onto the bottom so that I can sand them to fit on my disc sander. Just go slow and take your time, and you can usually get a pretty good fit. Just a couple of touch-ups back and forth on the disc sander, and I found I had a nice tight fit for the bottom into the body of the box. Even with this tight fit, you'll notice that expansion and contraction really aren't a problem because the way the grain runs on the bottom is the same way the grain runs on the two ends. So they'll expand and contract at the same rate. It's time to glue in the bottom and once again, I like to have glue on every edge of every surface. As soon as I do a glue up, I like to get all the excess glue off with a damp rag right away. And I'll do that again once I've clamped it. An important step when building a box where the lid has to fit perfectly with the body is to create a big sanding block and make sure you sand the lid and the body both flush so they fit tightly together. When using hinges like these, once I get them measured for distance and fit it in place right where I want them, the easiest thing I find is to put a little bit of cyanoacrylate glue on the metal part of the hinge, spray some accelerator onto the wood, and then put the hinge in place. It gives me a nice temporary hold until I screw the hinge together. and I just repeat that process for both sides of every hinge. It's best to use a self-centering bit to attach hinges like this. It's also known as a Vix bit. This keeps the hole where the screw goes right in the very center of the hole of the hinge. And if you're going to drive the screws in with a power tool, make sure you go very slow and don't overdo it. 
they can break very easy. You can see a bunch of oxidation on the wood from where the accelerator oversprayed. That actually usually sands off without any problem at all. It's a good idea to carefully measure and plan your layout for any hardware you might install on your box. For this pirate's chest, I chose forged iron handles and forged iron hinges. You can see I've put a center line on the chest and a center line on the hinge. That helps me get the hinge right in the very center. It's a really good idea to use a center punch to get your hole started just a little bit so that your drill bit doesn't wander when you put in the holes for the screws. I've also put a little piece of tape on the drill bit to give me a depth stop. I don't want those holes going all the way through. I would advise using a screwdriver to install these screws, but if you do want to use a power tool, just make sure you go slow and don't bottom it out too hard because if the screw breaks off at this point it's really quite a chore to fix it. I wanted to put a slight bevel where the lid meets the body, so there's a clear definition of separation between the two. There's lots of ways to put chains in to hold your box open, and lots of types of chains. I usually find the best prices can be found at hobby stores. I think I picked these up at my local Hobby Lobby for about five dollars. And they kind of have a good piratey look to them. If you remember earlier in the video I was talking about how the butt joints are actually fairly weak and this is how we're going to address that problem and make this box significantly stronger. I've laid out a pattern of putting a row of these cabinet screws around the entire perimeter. The screw heads sort of have a built-in washer, and it almost gives a look of a box that's been nailed together. About every inch of this butt joint all around the entire box has these screws. This is far overkill for strength, but it really adds a lot to the character of this pirate's chest. I even decided to put a row of these along the bottom. And on Amazon, I found an antique reproduction lock that looks like it perfectly fits the character of this pirate's chest. I figured if this is a pirate's treasure chest, then it must be holding gold. So what better stain than golden oak finish? I apply the finish fairly liberally to 220 grit sanded surfaces. I wait a couple of minutes and then wipe all of the excess stain off. I give the stain a full 24 hours to dry since it is an oil based stain. And then it's time to mount the hasp. I've carefully measured where I want it to go, and I've done the same technique I did before, with CA glue and a little bit of accelerator to get it temporarily positioned 
until I can drill the holes and put the screws. Once again I use a VIX bit, which is a self-centering bit, in order to perfectly center the screw holes. A quick spray of air to blow the sawdust out of the holes. We don't want the holes so tight that we have to put extra torque on the screws to get them in, as this might risk breaking. I've got to make sure that lock works so that I know we can store our gold safely. For the final top coat, I like to use a satin lacquer finish. If the project is large, I have an air compressor and a sprayer that I use. But if it's small, it's actually a lot easier just to use the individual cans. Deft makes a really nice product and it's the one that I use the most. I put about four coats total, sanding between each coat. My sanding starts at around 400 grit and ends up at about 2000 grit when I'm all done. And that's it, one completed pirate's chest ready to be filled with gold. I think I'm going to let my daughter do that part. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing to my channel.